right, Unit 6, Form of 2, Day 3, it's Measures of Central Tendencies. These you've done before, uh, mean, median, mode, and range. Remember, mean is the average. Okay, so, and then median is your middle number. Think of median in the road. Mode is number that occurs the most. And range is your highest number, or your largest number, minus your lowest or smallest number. Okay. All right, so we're going to find the central tendencies for the following set, and then we're going to find out which best fit or describes the data. So remember, we have mean, median, mode, and range. One of those is going to describe the data better than something else. Okay. So the first thing I do when I have these is put them in order. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in order. Okay, so the mean is the average. So the mean, I want to add up all the numbers and divide by how many numbers I have. Okay, when I add those up, I get 41, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers. And I'm just going to round to the nearest tenth. This is going to give me 5.9. Okay, now this number should be in the set. Like, I'm not going to get an answer of 10 or 2, so be careful of that. Median is the middle number, okay? So I'm going to cross, we got that. Okay, and I have a number that's directly in the middle, so my median is 6. My mode is the number that occurs the most. My mode would be 4 here, because the 4 occurs twice. And my range is my highest minus my lowest, so that my range of data is 6. Now the best fit. The best fit most of the time is going to be your mean, okay? Unless you have what we call an outlier. An outlier is a number that doesn't really fit. It's really small or really larger than the set itself. And this doesn't have an outlier. So mean or median would actually be a good um, measure for these numbers, okay? Because if you look, 5.9, pretty close to the middle, and then even your median is directly in the middle. So those two are going to be um, good measures of the central tendencies for this set of data. Um, mode, the only time that mode is ever used if you have qualitative data. Set, I'm going to go ahead and again and put this in order. We have 9, 10, 11, oops, I forgot 6. 13, and 32. All right, so my mean, when I add these up, I got 81, and there's six numbers. That's going to give me 13.5. Now, if you notice, 13.5 is way towards the end. So median is my middle. Okay, here you notice I have six, so my median is right in between 10 and 11. So I'm going to add those together. Divide by 2, and I get 10.5. My mode is the number that occurs the most, and no number repeats, so there is no mode or you put none. Don't put a 0 because a 0 could be actually in the set. Range is highest minus lowest, which gives me 26 on that. Okay. Now, best fit. Okay, my mean, if you look at my mean, it is way over here. It's between the last two numbers. So that doesn't describe my numbers very well. Median is here in the middle. Okay, so this one would be my best fit. It describes my numbers. Again, think central tendencies. Okay, so on this one, we would have to have a median. 32, if you notice 32, does it look like the other numbers? And it doesn't. 32 is called an outlier because it doesn't really match the rest of the numbers. Whenever there's an outlier, your median is your best fit. All right, now on this one, 
we're going to be given numbers and we, we have one missing. So we're going to find the missing value from the test scores of 80, 93, 91, and an unknown number. We want to find out what grade you would need to have an average of 90. Okay. So I know I want my average to be 90. I also know that I have four test scores, one, two, three, and the fourth one's the unknown one. Okay, so make sure you don't forget that one. There will be one like this on the test. Now up here, okay, is the sum of the numbers. So I'm going to add 80 plus 93 plus 91 plus x, and I'm going to get 264 plus x. Remember, you can't add the x there. Now this is an equation. I want to get x by itself, okay? so I'm going to get rid of this 4. So I'm going to multiply by 4 so they cancel. Now if I multiply one side by 4, I also have to multiply the other side by 4. So this gives me 360 equals 264 plus x. Subtract 264 and x equals 96. So you would have to get a 96 on your test to have an average of 90 on your overall grade. And that's it for central tendencies.